we're talking about symmetry in nature. But first, what is symmetry? It's a math concept that can be applied as a property of living things. It refers to an organism looking the same after a transformation, like a reflection or a rotation. The repetition of the parts of an organism in an orderly fashion also allows an organism to conserve energy during development and have greater success in making sure body parts go where they're supposed to, instead of having arms for legs and toes for fingers. Our DNA is even symmetrical in structure, even though the parts that make it up do vary so that it can code for different molecules. Evolutionarily, symmetry also ended up indirectly helping in other ways too, like helping animals easily find and select a mate and pollinators were able to identify the flowers of plants better. There are three types for us to talk about today. Let's start with bilateral symmetry, also known as mirror symmetry. This is when an imaginary line can cut straight through a center point down the line of symmetry. And the result is two mirrored halves. The evolution of bilateral symmetry was advantageous millions of years ago because it helped animals direct their eyes, their mouth, their nose, and ears towards the front, also known as a head. And then it also allowed them to become streamlined in the water because that's where most organisms lived long ago. This is the type of symmetry that 99% of all living animals possess. Think about butterfly wings, a cat, a dog, even me. I have two eyes, two ears, two arms, right? But I want you to keep in mind that nature is perfectly imperfect. Have you ever noticed the little differences between your left and your right side? If I drew a line of symmetry down the middle of my face and mirrored each one separately, I would look like two totally different people. This is pretty much the case for any living creature too. Physiologically, we have symmetry, but realistically, there are differences in me, in you, in all of us, which demonstrates the beauty of imperfections. The second type is radial symmetry, also known as rotational symmetry. This is when an organism can be turned around a center point and match itself a number of times. Think of a snowflake, a starfish, a pine cone, and most flowers too. Technically though, starfish have radial symmetry in their adult stage, but in their larval stage, they're actually bilaterally symmetric, which tells us that humans like us are more closely related to starfish than jellyfish because we share bilateral symmetry at some point of our lives. The third type is called spherical symmetry. This is often found in teeny tiny microscopic groups of organisms where their body shape is a sphere and other parts are arranged in a circular pattern around it from the center. This type mostly describes a type of zooplankton called radiolarians that live in the oceans. These are super interesting because they aren't plants or animals, they're protists. And they're made of silica instead of carbon. I have one extra type that I need to mention. Asymmetry is the absence of symmetry. Some organisms have a body shape that is irregular or constantly changing, like sea sponges and amoebas, which are constantly changing shape. So we call them asymmetrical. This vocabulary word is more of a descriptive word that we can use to further describe some species. As in nature, not everything is black or white. In some symmetrical species, asymmetry is actually beneficial. Take the fiddler crab here. The males will grow one massive claw while their other one remains small. But why? Biologists think that this is an example of form following function. They use their big claw to attract mates and also potentially as a weapon. Female fiddler crabs prefer this asymmetry and this demonstrates nature's necessity for exceptions in symmetry. So now that we've explored all of the types, 
In this week's lesson, you'll be able to see symmetry all over in nature. So let's head outside and go explore.